Okay, so I just got to say, what are, wait, what are my lights? Can I? Thanks, okay. Um, oh, I just got to say, do the welcome? Yes. Okay, all right. Welcome to, oh, what a night, the Chamber's 110th annual meeting. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. No, that's not right. Well, what is it? Welcome to Oh What a Night, the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Welcome to Oh What a Show. I can do this. <laughs> Who wrote this script? Let's go. Jock jams. You know what? I just I just I just quit. Just kidding. I have student loans. A few moments later. Ah, yeah, I do, I do. Okay, I, you know, I don't even need that. Okay, okay. Well, and welcome to Oh What a Night, the Chamber's 107th annual meeting here at the lovely Florian Gardens Conference Center. Thank you to our sponsors and all of our attendees. If you don't know, I'm Chelsea Sikora, the creative director here with the Eau Claire Area Chamber of Commerce. It has been an absolute wild ride the past couple of years with us reinventing ourselves as an organization. The list is pretty long, so I'm definitely not gonna be standing here telling you all about it, but instead, who better to hear from it than those that make it happen, the chamber staff. We kicked off 2021 by hosting Oh What a Night, the Chamber's annual meeting, which was held in two parts. The first in January was brought to you virtually via Paragon, where hundreds of you tuned in to view this wonderful event from the comfort of your homes or offices. Part two, which was held in May at Phoenix Park, was for many of us the first in-person event we had attended in over a year. It was truly a magical evening filled with amazing food, live music, and the chance to reconnect with those we hadn't seen in what seemed like forever. Other highlights through the year included our Chamber CVTC Business Community Breakfast, which introduced us to CVTC's new automated fabrication lab, and our annual Economic Outlook Luncheon, which featured Neil Kashkari, President and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. This hybrid event drew so much attention that it was viewed by and reported on by over 10 national and international media outlets. Back here at the Chamber, we as a team settled back into our offices, determined to make 2021 the best year that we could under circumstances none of us had ever experienced. When I first started at the Chamber, I was in administrative assistant role, greeting our investors and helping the community. Now, three years later, I have transitioned into a brand new role as the event and program director. The goal of this new role was to have a designated staff member handle the majority of our events, which would allow for other directors to focus on their pillars and goals. As we evolved from how we used to plan and hold events, our investors' needs today are different from what they were. We now have the capacity to create and change events to better suit our investors' needs. There are new things to consider when planning events that we never thought of before. Do we hold events virtually and think of new ways to network? Can we do a hybrid version or is it in person? Asking these questions allowed us to get creative and identify what really matters when it comes to our events and programs, which is value. Value for our investors and your employees. I'm very excited to be in this new role and offer a new perspective on our events. Now that I am engaging with you, our investors, in a different capacity, I look forward to how I can better serve you and our community. With the challenges brought on by the pandemic, the Chamber had to change and adapt to continue to support the business community. Our budget flexed and changed. As it did, we had to look at new opportunities to provide value to our investors. We took advantage of the federal funding available through the PPP Forgivable Loans and the Employer Retention Tax Credits. The corresponding funding helped to ensure the Chamber was able to continue to support our business community. These additional funds also allowed us to expand our staff, adding Kelsey to the team in late August. Upon graduating from UW-Eau Claire in 2020, I knew that I wanted to stay here in the Chippewa Valley and start my career because of the strong business community and the sense of home I felt, especially thanks to my internship here at the Chamber during my senior year of college. Luckily for me, the timing was right and I was offered a position back at the Chamber. 
I was honored and excited for the opportunity to be back with the best team and being able to support the success of you, our investors. I think one of the most exciting parts has been being in the forefront of opening up our lobby again and being able to greet you with a smiling face, ready to prepare your chamber buck order, grab you a map of Eau Claire, register you for one of our events, or sell you business after hours passes. I'm proud to say that in 2021, we sold just under $200,000 in our Chamber Buy Local Bucks program that will stay right here within our community. I look forward to continue being a part of the success and building those strong relationships with our investors that we represent by being the advocate of business within our community. As we continue to create even more value for our investors, our level of production has increased significantly. A couple examples are produced right here in the Wind Technology Studio located in the Chamber Building. Those being the podcast, Business Matters, where the matters of business matter. We bring in business individuals to come and share their story. On top of that, we've completely shifted our Chamber directory to now a narrative sharing the stories of business, vitality, and home in the Eau Claire area titled the EC Life. And to complement that, we take a deep dive into the spotlight stories in those magazines through our talk show, EC Life Sofa Segment. There is so much more to come from this studio and from everything else we continue to produce. So be sure to stay tuned. And you thought you'd seen the last me, but that is far from the truth. I have lots to talk about. One being, well, not one, but four being our core pillars, advocacy, workforce, education, and investor engagement. These pillars are the foundation of us as a chamber and allow us to carry out our mission of being the advocate of business. These past two years make it clear that decisions made by government can have a big impact on businesses and the economy. To ensure that the voice of business is at the table, we continue to work to advocate on key issues, build connections with policymakers, and provide timely information to chamber investors, equipping them for effective involvement and influence. With the challenges brought on by the pandemic, we've supported needed economic relief. Protection from liability and tax consequences responded to potential local health ordinances and fostered cooperation between the public and private sector. We've provided timely information for Chamber investors with a weekly business advocate newsletter and adjusted formats as necessary with a virtual version of the Chippewa Valley Rally last March and our now hybrid Eggs and Issues Breakfast. Here in 2022, our priorities include supporting the policies to tackle workforce challenges, including local housing supply and affordability, ensuring that our region benefits from coming federal infrastructure investments, getting the UW-Eau Claire Science Building included in state budget decisions, and providing voter education for the spring and fall elections. In the nearly three years that I've been in this role, workforce continues to be the top concern of employers across the Chippewa Valley. Companies are consistently talking about strategies to recruit new employees and how to retain and develop current staff. The Chamber's role, led by its Workforce Development Committee, is to serve as an action committee and support for our employers as they work to solve their immediate and long-term talent and workforce challenges. Over the last year, we have organized our efforts into three workforce tenants to help our investors and community understand the programs, initiative, and events that we offer. The first is DEVELOP. We work to develop our future workforce through K-12 and post-secondary institutions to expose students to career opportunities in Eau Claire County. We will continue to focus and support development opportunities for employees in this region's industry leaders. Second is ATTRACT. We create services and programs that attract talent to our area and show why the Eau Claire and Chippewa Valley region is such a great place to live, work, and play. And last is Retain. When talent moves to our area, we provide businesses with professional and community development services to not only retain their employees, but to encourage continued development. We want to ensure that everyone in our area is contributing to our growing economy and reaching their full potential. This was a huge year for our Young Professionals organization. So many accomplishments to highlight. We exceeded our YP Cares goal and volunteered an impressive 2,300 hours in one year. From shoveling for neighbors to adopting Phoenix Park for cleanups, from hosting a huge food drive to volunteering at Oktoberfest, our group was impressively active in the community. With leadership and guidance from our YP board, we also started a YP mentoring program with peer-to-peer -peer matches within our organization. In my work for our Chamber Educational Foundation, we are running highly successful Leadership Eau Claire and Youth Leadership Eau Claire programs. 
Through dedicated work of both our volunteer committees that make these programs possible, we're proud to see both leadership classes fully engaged, getting a bird's eye view of the issues facing the community and how to develop skills to make an impact locally. The perspective gained is incredibly valuable and beyond the traditional view of education by providing highly valuable and impactful experiences for our classes. The future is extraordinarily bright for all of these programs, and with the help of our foundation and investors, we look forward to continuing our growth. As we close another year here at the Chamber, I want to thank all of our investors for a great year. We truly appreciate the support so we can remain the advocate of business in our community. It was a year of positive momentum, as well as bringing some great programs back. With regards to investor engagement, 2021 saw some great growth here at the Chamber. Let me share some of those highlights. We continued to move a lot of you into our tier level structure, thus resulting in more overall value for you, the investor. Retention continues to be solid as we increased our overall retention average. We also developed a retention roadmap, so we are more engaged, more on a consistent basis. We implemented out a thank you card program. Maybe you've received a card from us. The golf outings sold out in 90 minutes and we had over 180 golfers, corporate suites, and a lot of heckling. With the assistance of our ambassador team, we brought back our house business event. You may have seen the ambassadors out in the community all year as we visited over 50 of you asking how's business. We had over a thousand professionals attend the business after hours event in 2021. We facilitated over 60 ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings also in 2021. Our ambassador program is a leader in our state with over 30 business professionals volunteering over 800 hours to help us with the investor experience. Plan on more continued value in 2022 and thank you. Oh, hi, me again. I I promise this will be quick. As we wrap up the end of our annual report, who better to do it than our valiant leader, Dave Miner. Over the past two years, many of you have had to change the way you do business. Well, we had to do the same thing here at the Chamber. Our in-person events, as many of you know, they disappeared overnight. So we had to pivot and look at a new way to be able to deliver to you critical information that you needed on a timely basis. And again, as we all remember, a lot of that information was changing hourly, daily, and weekly. So we went to a platform called Paragon. And I want to thank the folks at Wynn for allowing us to be able to use this to keep up with you. But as we start coming out of this, we realized we can't go back to what we were doing. So as we go forward, as we look at coming out of this, the board has made the decision to keep up the momentum in those things we took on that were critical to you, our investors. They were advocacy, workforce, our education and our foundation, which you'll hear more about coming up this summer, and true investor engagement. Now we're still going to do some events, and we're still going to do some programs, but we truly know and we've seen out of these past two years how critical advocacy and workforce truly are to you, our investors. So we're going to continue to put more and more emphasis into those areas because we know for you to grow, to go back to where we were, is not something we can do. Over the past two years, there are two areas, though, that I am truly, truly very happy about. The first is our image. Not that we ever had a bad image, but today, coming out of these past two years, and again, the efforts we made with the task force and other areas that we emphasized on, I believe the greater community, the larger area of the Chippewa Valley, truly has a stronger, better image of the chamber today than maybe they ever had in the past. And the second thing is my staff. Now I know overall everybody loves their staff and everybody will say they've got the best staff that's out there. Well. I can honestly tell you that I do. When I look at the hundreds of hours that they put into keeping things going, to maintaining everything, to rewriting programs from bottom to top, side to side, I will stack up my staff against anybody that is out there because they gave their heart, their soul to keep this chamber going for the past two years. So I would ask one thing of you before you leave here this evening or if you're not and you're watching this later, please call one of my staff and simply say thank you. Because they did it for you. 
They did it to keep this community going because they believe in it with all of their heart and their soul. And I couldn't ask for anything better. God bless you all, and thank you for being here this evening.